Hi everybody, my name is Debbie. I'm a teacher from Bloemfontein and I'm going to help you with your math literacy today. Our topic for today is taxation. So I hope you've got your calculators nearby and your um, pieces of paper, some pens to write and a lot of enthusiasm. Because I'm going to help you and I'm hoping by the end of today's session that you will be so enthusiastic about your math lit and especially hoping that you'll get a question on taxation. Well, let's hold thumbs. Here goes. I'm wondering, some of you are thinking maybe next year you're going to start working. Hopefully you're going to get a job. Some of you are going to be studying and then you're also going to get a job, a good job maybe. And then you're going to have to start paying tax. Now, you might think, why must I pay tax? 20 or 30% of my salary to the government. Why? I've worked hard for it. Why should I give some to the government? Well, think of it. The government is a big organization. They have got lots of responsibilities. And their job is to see that we are... Um, provided for as citizens of, of South Africa. So if you look at, um, I've got a list here of things that I've written down that I want you to have a look at. One of them is types of, um, one of the types of social um, responsibilities that the government has is health care, hospitals. Maybe near your house you've got a clinic. That was pro probably provided by taxpayers' money. Social welfare. If you know a pensioner, they might be getting a, a, um, a pension from the government or a disability grant. Education, they also have to provide for education from taxpayers' money. The building you're sitting in right now might be paid by taxpayers' money. Textbooks and even security, the army as our defense force. There are lots of different things that the government has to provide for and they use taxpayers' money. Now you might wonder who is actually collecting this money. Well, the, play, the organization, let's say, that collects the money is called SARS. You've probably heard of SARS. It's the South African Revenue Service. And they collect money from individuals and businesses. But another way that they also collect from individuals and businesses is through VAT. You've heard of VAT, and we'll be looking at that a little bit later maybe. It's a value-added tax. Now, about a third of the money that is um, um, taken from t um, taxpayers or from people in South Africa is VAT. And that is used um, also for all these different um, infrastructures that the government has to provide for. Now, you might think, well, what if I work for every day of the week and I earn 10,000 Rand and my, the guy next to me earns 150 Rand in the month? How, do, how does the government decide who's going to pay what? How much are we going to pay? Well, boy, are you listening? Right. The system that we have in South Africa is called pay as you earn. That is... Um, P-A-Y-E system. So what happens is that the people that are earning more money pay more tax. The people that are earning less money pay less tax. And we have a, what we call a sliding scale. Later on we're going to look at the tax table and then you'll get a better idea of it. But sometimes you get people that earn a very low income. Like for example, if you're only earning 150 Rand a month, you won't pay any tax. And that we'll also talk about when we get to the tax table. Now, when, when we have what we call um, your gross income, that is all the money that you're getting, that you get in a month. Let's have a look at that definition quickly, and you might like to, if you're not sure of it, pay attention now. Your gross income is all the money that you get in a month. Your salary, rental income, housing subsidy, commission, any bonuses you get, and that is before deductions. It's very important that you listen to that now. It's before deductions. Gross income is your great income, your big income. Before any money is taken off in the month, that is what um, any deductions are made. You, um, you call that your gross income. Now, you have um, what we call your taxable income. Now, your taxable income is all the, um, the gross income, all that money that you've earned, minus allowable deductions. Now, what are those allowable deductions? You might be asking me that question. Well, allowable um, deductions are things like um, UIF. Remember that because we're going to do some questions just now. UIF and also um, pension fund. Those are two things that are always um, uh, tax deductible to a certain degree. And there I've put them for you. And I've also put there donations by companies. But we're not going to be looking at companies today. We're going to be looking at um, we're going to be looking at individuals tax. But I just put it in there so that you've got a little bit more information. All right. Now, can you I just want to recap this because this is incredibly important. Your gross income is all the money that you get in the month. Your taxable income, the, the, the amount that we use to work out your tax, 
is your gross income minus any allowable tax deductions. The UIF and the pension fund especially, we're going to pay attention to that today. Now, I'm going to give you something to write down. So will you please get, all, get your pens and your paper out? And we, I'm going to give you something now to copy down that we're going to refer to during the lesson today. So it's a very good idea if you can copy this down and put it somewhere where you're going to see it when we're working through the sums. These are the steps. I'm just going to cover the others for now. The, these are the steps that we're going to use. The first thing is you must determine the person's annual gross income. Annual means for the whole year. So if the question refers to monthly income, what do you have to do to it? Yes, yes, multiply by 12, because there are 12 months in the year. So you get the annual income by multiplying by 12 if they get the monthly income. You first have the gross income, then you're going to subtract all allowable tax deductions from the gross income. So in the question, if they say to you, he pays 100 Rand UIF every month. What are you going to do? You're going to multiply by 12. Remember, multiplying by 12, very important to get to the, to get to the annual um, deduction for UIF. And the same with pension. If it's a monthly pension they give you in the question, you have to multiply by 12. Then you must use the tax table. So after working out, getting the gross income, then you get the deductions, you work out the deductions, and when you've got that, you subtract the two so that you know how much is the um, taxable income. Remember, let me put it right at the top here, it's very important. Taxable income is the gross income minus the allowable tax deductions. Once you've got the taxable income, then you go to step three because now we're going to use the tax table. And after this, I'm going to talk to you about the tax table. So don't worry about that now. Just get this written down. And then the last thing we do is we subtract the rebate. Don't worry about the word rebate if you've never heard of it. I hope you have heard about it. But if you haven't, well, I'll tell you about it now. Just copy this down so you have it in front of you because I can't show you these steps while I'm trying to explain sums. And I want you just to have that nearby so that you can um, do it. I'll give you a minute to write down. Determine the annual gross income, then you subtract all the allowable tax deductions from the gross income. Only in step three do we use the tax table because learners tend to want to grab the tax table the minute they see a tax question. And that's only a little bit later once you've done the annual gross income and you've worked out your deductions. Are those children at the back also doing it? I'm glad. That's good. Yes, yes, okay. Now, while, while you're copying that, I'm going to take this top one away and I want to give you something else. The rebate. The rebate is, you can think of it like a discount. After you've worked with the tax table and you've got an idea, this is what the tax is going to be, the government says, oh, 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 I'm going to give you a discount. Isn't that nice, hey, from the government to get a discount? Anyway, they give you this discount, but it's right at the end. They, after you've worked out everything, then they say, oh, okay, I'm going to give you a discount. And how do they work out the discount? It's according to your age. The person's age is used to work out the discount. Very, very, very important that the rebate is only at the end of your whole calculation. You take, you minus the discount. That can be confusing. Okay, now we're going to look at the tax table. I'm going to start at the top. The tax table has got Taxable annual income. So that, again, is the whole um, income for the whole year. It's not just that little bit um, for a month or something. It's the whole year. And then they've got categories or, um, from 0 to 160,000. So if, you, if you're earning one year between 0 and 160,000, then that will be 
your um, tax, what they call the tax bracket. And on the right-hand side, they've got the rate of tax. So how are they going to work out the tax? How do you calculate the tax? So if you look here, if you earn between 0 and 160,000, you, you use 18% of how, whatever that amount is. So let's say you earn 120,000 Rand, then you're going to say 18% of 120,000 Rand. So that one is pretty straightforward because most of you should know how to work with a percentage. But if let's say you've got an income of 200,000, then it's going to fall in the next tax bracket, 160,000. Um, and one hundred and sixty thousand and one rand up to two hundred and fifty thousand. So you in that tax bracket or that group. The formula that they give you is twenty eight thousand eight hundred plus twenty five percent of the amount above a hundred and sixty thousand rand. So if I say to you you're earning two hundred thousand rand, then you have to do a little subtraction of you. I'm gonna show you just now. You have to subtract 200,000 minus 160,000 to get the difference, to see how much is 200,000 above 160,000 rand. I'm going to show you how to work that out just now. So don't worry if you're confused here. We're going to go back to that and I'm going to show you a, re a real sum, a calculation and so on. I'm just going through the tax table to explain the different sections. Then we have tax rebates for individuals. Now the tax rebate, you get a primary rebate, that means it's for everybody, whether you are 21 years old and earning money or whether you're 99,9 .9 years old and earning money, that you will get that discount. Remember, rebate is a discount that is subtracted at the end of the calculation. So in this case, on this table, it says it's 11,440 Rand. You minus that. Then you have a secondary rebate for slightly older people, persons 65 years and older. So if you are 66 years old, you will get a rebate of 11,440 plus 6,390 because we want both. They want old people to have enough money. So they, the government's very kind. Give a discount, double discount. And then if you are really much older, you're 75 years and older, you get a tertiary rebate. Don't worry about the word tertiary. It just means a, the third rebate is 2,130. So you add all of these together if somebody is over 75 years and older. So if somebody is 90 years old, they will get back from the government 11,440 plus 6,390 plus 2,130. Then there's this thing called the tax threshold. Now tax threshold for individuals, that means that there's, they've got a, a line. You think of a threshold like a line. And if you are under that line, then you don't pay tax. And they've drawn the line at 63,556 Rand. They say, if you are under 65 years old, so if you're 40 years old or 22 years old, and you're earning 60,000 Rand or 50,000 Rand, you are under that tax threshold. You're under that line. So you will not pay any tax. You are exempt from tax. You do not pay anything. Isn't that nice, eh? Okay, but then if you are older than 65 years and older, you are allowed to earn up to 99,056 Rand before you start paying tax. So if you earn 100,000 100, Rand, you have to pay tax. And then you fall into this category of between 0 and 160,000. You're going to earn 100,000 Rand, then you're going to have to pay 18% of 100,000 Rand, which means you're going to be paying... 18,000 Rand to the government just because you're earning a few Rand more. Person 75 years and older, their tax threshold is 110,889 and they can pay and um, they can earn up to that amount before they start paying tax. Now, we're going to look at an example. No, let me first do this with you. I want you to work out for me. I'm going to keep a table there. I want you to work out for me what, or look at the table and decide what is the rebate for a person who is 34 years old. So determine the rebate for a person who is 34 years old. That, that isn't so difficult, am I right? Because the primary rebate is for people that are under 65 years old, and this person is 34, so they are going to have a rebate of 11,440 rand. 
Good. All of you got it correct. Well done. I'm really proud of you. That's very nice. Now we're going to go on to one a little bit more difficult. There you see, 11,440. Now, what is the rebate for somebody who's 67 years old? See if you can work that out. And get your calculators ready. Yes, you're going to take 11,440 plus 6,380. Add it together and you get 17,830. Well done to those of you who got that one right. I'm very proud of you, really. Just keep going. Now, the last one is quite an old person, 80 years old. How much are they going to have to pay? Yes, you're going to have to add all those numbers together. The 11,440 plus the 6,390, 2,130, and they get nearly 20,000 rand discount. 19,960. Well done to those of you who are getting this right. I'm really proud, okay? Now, we're going to try something. We're going to try an example. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to leave a tax table up there, and I'm going to put a question up for you, and I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to try, but I'm going to help you with it because it's the first question. Remember the steps. Remember the steps. First, work out the gross income if it's not given to you. Then you subtract the deductions if there are deductions. Then you use the tax table, and lastly, we subtract the rebate. All right, I hope you've got those little steps nearby. Our question, uh, this, this question is, Sam is 40 years old and earned 270,000 in one year. That's quite a nice salary, I think, 270,000 rand in one year. And he had no deductions. So, if you look at that list I made for you, that there, there are no tax allowable deductions for him. There's nothing that um, he's going to deduct from his salary. So this one will be a little bit more straightforward. And we're going to go straight to the tax table. I'm going to work through this example with you so that you can see um, how to do it. All right. Just remember he's 40 years old. When we come to the rebate, we'll work that out. But now we're going to work with 270,000 rand. And I'm going to show you a nice way to set out these questions so that it's easy for the marker. Because you know what? When you mark papers at the end of the year, you like it to be neat and easy to follow. So I'm going to help you to set it out nicely. You're going to say tax payable equals. Now, remember his salary was 270,000 Rand and he's 40 years old. I'm just going to put it there so that you've got that information. 270,000 and there are no deductions, so there's nothing that we have to subtract. If you go to the tax table, Let's look which bracket he falls in. He's not in that one, not in that one. He'll be in the third tax bracket because it's between 250,000 and 346,000. Now, if you go across the table, it says tax payable is 51,300. My word, what a lot of money. 51,300 plus, and then they give you, they say 30% of the amount above 250,000. And this is where people find it difficult. So now we're going to say 30% of 250,000. the amount above 250,000. So now we have to do a little subtraction. We say 270 rand, uh, 270,000 rand minus 250,000. That's, that's the setup. You take the salary, the gross salary, and you minus the amount that they give you here to say um, the salary is above that 250,000. So we take 51,300 plus. Now 30%, 30% is, let me just show you here. 30% is equal to 30 over 100. And if, you take, if you're not sure, you can take your calculator and go 30 divided by 100. And you'll see on your calculator, it says 0, 0,3. Or 0, 0,30. I can leave the 3,0. It doesn't matter. 
So over here at the bottom, I'm going just going to write 0, 3. 0, 3, 0, 3 times, of is times. Always remember, of is times. 270,000 minus 250,000. If you look, work it on your calculator, you get 20,000. So now, 51,300 plus. Now you take your calculator and you work out 0, 0,3 times 20,000 and you get 6,000. What have I forgotten as I'm working now? There's something that I didn't write down right from the beginning that I should have written down. Min over here, minus rebate. Minus rebate. Remember, that comes at the end. So this gets added together and I minus the rebate. I'm just reminding you about that rebate because I don't want you to think that I've forgotten about it. Okay. So you're working up to all these calculations and at the end we're going to minus the rebate. The tax payable is the, 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 use the formula with the gross income and then we minus the rebate at the end. Some people like to work out the, the tax table thing and then do a separate sum minus rebate. It doesn't matter either way, but you mustn't forget about the rebate. That's the important thing. Then we add these two together. 57,300 minus the rebate. Now, he's 40 years old. What will the rebate be? 11,000, we go to there, 11,440, because he's under 65 years old. Then we do a subtraction again, minus those two, and we get tax that he has to pay is 45,860. I'm going to go through the steps one more time, and then I'm going to give you an example to work on your own, and I'm going to leave you to work your own example. Okay. His gross salary was 270,000. There were no deductions. They told you in the question. Normally there are deductions, but I just kept it simple. No deductions. So we look at the f table, and 270,000 is between 250,000 in one rand and 346,000 rand. So we know we must use this formula over here. 51,300 plus 30%. I like to use square brackets. For the, for the whole thing, because inside I'm going to put little curvy brackets where I do the little subtraction section. So 30% of, now we do the subtraction in a bracket, the, the gross salary minus whatever they say you must put, 250,000. Because how much is 270,000 above 250,000? It's 20,000 more. Then we do um, this you just bring down, and you write it there, plus... Work out this bracket, 0, 0,3, that's 30%, times 20,000 is 6,000 rand, 6, rand. added together 57,300, and then you minus the rebate. Are you ready for a sum? Are you ready for your own one? And this one is about Lerato. Is there a Lerato somewhere there at one of those schools? I'm sure there's a Lerato sitting there. Come Lerato, you're going to get this correct. All right, here's the question. Lerato's annual salary is 170,000 rand. She is 62 years old, much older than the Lerato that's sitting in the audience. Eh? She is 62 years old. Calculate the tax she will have to pay if she has no deductions. Again, there are no deductions. So we're just going to go straight from step one to step three. What is the annual salary, gross annual um, salary? 170,000. So now look if you can find it on the table. Because now we're going straight to step three and we're going to do the look at the tax table. See if you can work it out. Which which bracket is it? First line, second line, third line? Yes, the second line. Good. So, Lerato's salary, I'm going to write it here, is 170,000, and she's 62 years old. The tax payable 
equals. Come on, to see if you can write it down. We're going to... You have to look over there. There's your, what you're going to use. Let's see. I wonder if you're on the right track. Are you managing? 28,800 plus 25% of the amount above 160,000. So we're going to say the gross salary minus the 160,000 because we want to see what the difference is. How much more is the salary than 160,000? We have to subtract. I hope you've got that step right, because if you've got that step right, you're well on your way. You're doing very well then. And if you're not, we're going to do some more examples, you'll get there. Don't worry. $28,800 plus, now remember, 25%, we're going to make 0,25 we divide it by a hundred. Keep your bracket there. Of is multiply. And then if we subtract these two, we get 10,000 Rand. Yes, man, I can see some of you are getting this right. That's very nice. Very nice. I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to write, subtract the rebate here because I'm running out of space. So we're going to do the rebate at the end every time. Okay. This is tax payable before the rebate. Twenty-eight thousand rand, twenty-eight thousand eight hundred rand plus. Now 0.25 times ten thousand. 2,500. Now we add those two together. And we get 31,300. Listen, if I'm going too fast, you must please tell me that I, to ask me to slow down. Send a message to me and tell me to slow down if I'm going too fast. Or if you, or if you have a question. Please, I don't want you to struggle there and suffer. No suffering allowed. Right. Tax payable. The final tax payable. What, if we, what do we have to do now? Very, very, very important. We have to go to the tax table and look at the age of the person and look at the rebate. This um, Lerato is 62 years old, so let's look. Is she 65 years and older? No, no. We've got to go to the primary rebate. Because she's younger than 65, so we have to subtract 11,000. 440. Just make sure you can see everything nicely. Can you see it? 440. And then our final tax payable will be 19,860. See this nice little discount she got at the end. Check your answer against mine. If you've made a mistake, look where you've made your mistake. Maybe you made it over here. At the, um, because sometimes people forget to subtract. They just say 670 or they just say 160,000. But you must do that little subtraction sum over there. Okay. Now, what I want to do is go just look at these steps again, just to make sure that everybody is 100% sure. 100, 100. Okay. Because now I'm going to go on to a slightly more difficult sum. Determine the annual gross income. That's the very first step you do. So you look at the question and you find out where is, what is his gross income for the year. For not just for a month, for the year. Then you subtract all the allowable tax deductions from the gross income. Then you use the tax table 
to calculate the tax, like we did now, and then you subtract the rebate. So first we look at gross income and deductions. And Mr. McCorbo is the person in our next question. Let's have a look. Mr. McCorbo is 68 years old, and he earns 395000 in one tax year. His tax deductions, yeah, we must pay attention because now we've got deductions, which we didn't have in the previous sum. His deductions for the year come to 27500 Calculate the tax payable by Mr. McCorbo. Now remember the steps. The f and the other thing that you must remember is taxable income. Before you can work out the taxable income, or work, use the tax table, you have to work out his taxable income. Gross income minus deductions. Now I want to see who are the stars of the show. Hey? I'm sure there's some of you that can do this sum. Let's try. Let's look at the tax table. No, we're not going to look at the tax table. We're first going to work out, see if we've got his gross income, his deductions, gross income. What is it? I'm talking annual gross income now, eh? It's annual gross income, 395,000 rand. What are his deductions? Yes, I can hear somebody saying deductions, 27,500. And they said it's for the year, so we don't have to multiply by anything by 12 or anything like that, because it's for the year, we're fine. Now we work out his taxable income. Look here, taxable income, it's up the top here as well, gross income minus allowable tax deductions. It's a very good idea when you're doing your, your exams to write words, because it helps the marker understand what are you working out now. What is this that you're trying to work out? So if you say taxable income, then they know that's what they, they're looking at. And even if you make mistakes, it helps them to follow and maybe give you marks for something else. So don't, don't be scared to put a word there. It's very, very helpful if you're a marker. Taxable income, you subtract the two, and then you get um, Work it out. Those of you who are waiting for me, you can work it out. Work it out. Yes, 367,500. And that is the amount we're going to work with on our tax table. That, and just remember, he is 68 years old because we need to know that for our um, rebate. Now, if you, can, if you can see what I'm doing, I'm... This is like your exam paper, and I'm, this is your answer sheet in the exam. And you see what I'm doing. I'm picking out important information so that I don't forget about it. In your exam, you could underline it or highlight it, but it's also good to put it somewhere where you're not going to forget about the rebate, because you don't want to forget about the rebate. Now we're going to work with the tax table. Let's look at it. 367,500, another lot of money, a big income, hey? Let's look. He falls in this tax bracket over here, this one here. Between 346,000 and 1 rand and 484,000, that is the tax bracket. So you're going to use this formula that's next to it here, this, to work it out. Tax payable. Start like that. Tax payable and let's just write it before the rebate. Okay. Because the rebate is at the end. And that's one thing you better know by the end of this lesson because we start saying it over and over and over. Rebate at the end. Rebate at the end. Okay. Tax payable. I want to see if you can write out that little formula, especially the subtraction part. I want to see who can get that right. Because that is... That's important. Okay. 
We said his taxable income is in this tax bracket here where it says 51,300. So we're going to write 51,300 plus what percentage? 30%. 30% of, put your curvy brackets in. Now, the amount above 250,000. So what are we going to write first? We're going to write the gross income. 367,500 minus 250,000. Square brackets to end off equals, again, 51,300. We just bring that down and we're going to work with this. 0, 0,3, 0 times, subtract that, and we get 21,000. No. Is it 20? No, it can't be. Guys, I've made a mistake. 300 and 367,000, you see now what can happen in an exam. It's not 250,000, it's 346,000. I'm glad I spotted that. I won't lose any marks, eh? Good, so be careful when you write down things from, a tax, from the tax table. You don't copy on, from the wrong line. And it's not 30%, it's 35%. Be very careful, 30 5%. I hope some of you got that right because I didn't get it right. There we go. Now, 367,500 minus 346,000. What is the answer there? Yes, 21,500. Good. Well done. I see some people are on the ball there. 51,300 plus, now, 0.35 times 21,500. Work that out. 7,525. There we go. I must apologize. I'm using the wrong line all the way. I'm really sorry. I've now, I hope you've seen that. Let's just, let's just change this. This is 80,100. 80,100. I've been copying from the wrong line and now I see I'm making a total mistake. I'm very sorry. Um, this is 80,000. Look here. We're in that tax bracket. 367,000 is there. 80,100 should be 80,100. Let me just write this out neatly. 80,100 80, plus 7,525. There we are. I really um, hope that somebody's got that correct and not like me. Hey? Then you add those two together. And you're going to get 87,625. This, this example can just show you that if you don't look on the correct line, you're going to make a big mistake and your whole sum is going to be wrong. All right. Let me move that up. There we go. Now, we've got that amount, but what do we still have to do? We have to say 87,000. 625 minus what? Minus the rebate. And if we go back to our question, he's 68 years old. You see over here, 68 years old? So, yeah, I've written it. 68 years old, if you look here, this person qualifies, Mr. McCorbell qualifies for the rebate of 11,440 and 6,390. He gets both because he's over 65 years old. And so the tax, final tax payable at the end, let me just move this up so that you can see what I'm doing. The final tax payable is um, 87,625 minus, you add your rebates together and you get 17,830. Now I want to point out something to you. What some learners do is they say, they put on their calculator 87,625 minus, and then they open brackets, and they type that in plus, and all of this, and they close brackets, and they get an answer. Then they go straight from that question, or that, that, uh, that sum, down to the answer. And um, it's not a very good idea, and I'll explain to you now why. The answer will be 6,795. What happens is, let's say you made an, an error here, and you got the wrong answer here. But on the memo, 
the person marking your paper at the end of the year, they might give a mark for getting that answer correct. But let's say you made a mistake and you wrote down the wrong answer. Then maybe that will be wrong, but if you're not showing that, you're going to lose two marks because that's wrong and you ca they can't see if you got that right. So then you lose two marks. So show every single step in a math literacy paper. It's really, really worthwhile, especially you, those of you who changed from maths to math literacy. Because in maths, the answer's wrong, it's wrong. Whereas math literacy, all your steps can sometimes give you a lot of marks. So work at showing all your steps. Don't take shortcuts. It's not worth it. Right. Let's see. Now I've got another question for you. We'll come back to more like this one, but I just want to show you one that's a little bit different. Let's have a look. Let's take this away. There's our tax table. Now I've got a question. And this one, it's a little bit of a trick question, so I want you to pay attention. Jack earns 60,000 Rand per year and he is 45 years old. How much will tax will he have to pay? Hmm, I wonder. Now, how many of you went straight to the tax table and looked at the top there and said 18% of 60,000? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Let's have a look first. 60,000 isn't very high. And now, we've, remember, we've got a thing called a tax threshold over here. So how much tax is he going to pay? Have a look. A threshold, remember, is the amount, a line that is drawn in your in imaginary line. If you are under the tax threshold, you do not pay any tax. If you are over the tax threshold, you do pay tax. All right? So Jack earns 60,000 rand, and he is only 45 years old, so he is in this first group. Does he, does he qualify not to pay tax. Must he pay tax or mustn't he pay tax? Yes, he doesn't pay any tax. I should say no, eh? No, he doesn't pay tax. Um, his tax is le um, only 60,000, uh, his income is only 60,000 rand a year. He's under the threshold, so he doesn't pay any tax. Sometimes you might just get a little question like that. Does he have to pay tax? No, and you have to motivate it. You have to explain why. You can't just say no. You've got to give a reason. All your questions were math lit, you have to give a reason why you're saying what you're saying. Not just a lucky shot in the dark. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the next one. That was just a little simple little one that I put in there just to make you think of the threshold. All right? Don't forget about the threshold. This question, let's read it. Mrs. Selabalu. I wonder whose surname is Selabalu. Is there Selabalu watching us today? Maybe? Yes. Okay. Mrs. Selabalu is 29 years old and earns 10,000 rand per month. They're not saying per year now. They're saying per month. Oh, my goodness. Now we've got to sit up and pay attention. Eh? She pays 100 rand per month for UIF and contributes 7,200 a year. Oh, this is getting confusing. A year and a month. We must keep our heads now. Hey? Listen carefully. She contributes 7,200 rand a year towards a pension fund. What will her annual tax be? Now, we go back to those four steps that I gave you in the beginning. What's the first thing you must do? And if you're studying for the exams and you're doing taxation, you must learn those steps because you can't take little notes in to say, what must I do now? What must I do now? Okay? So let's see. 10,000 Rand per month. Let's write down a few of these bits of information just so we've got it close by. Can you see that? Right. She earns 10,000 per month. Don't forget that. And she pays, and her, um, she pays 100 Rand per month for UIF and um, 7,200 per year annually for, um, for pension. How old is she? She is, I'm going to put it yeah. age 29 years. So we don't forget. 
Is there anything else we must remember here? I think we've got it all covered, eh? Okay, I'm going to put the question to one side. And I want to see now if you can work it out. Let's first start at the first step. The first step is determine her gross income. So we don't have to use that. We're going to work out her gross income. Let's do it up top here. Gross income. Her monthly income we saw is 10,000 per month. So gross income will be 10, let's put it equals, 10,000 times what? How many months in a year? 12. So her gross income is 120,000 rand. Now her deductions, because that's the second step. You've got to work out your deductions. Deductions equal, now we've got two lots of things. We've got UIF and pension. UIF and the pension. See if you can work it out. I'm going to give you a minute now to work out the, the UIF and the pension. But remember, it's for the year. See if you can work it out. Come try. Don't just look around. You must try. Those of you who are not trying, this is your chance. This is your chance. What is the UIF? It's 100 Rand. But we just leave it like that. No, 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 no. Multiply by 12 because it's for the year. We have to multiply by 12. And then we have to add the pension. Do we have to multiply the pension by 12? No. Why? Because it's already for the year. We don't have to do it again. Are you getting this right? That's it. I'm so happy, man. These marks are climbing. I can just sense it. They're climbing and climbing. We're going to have good marks at the end of the year. You multiply 100 times 12, you get 1,200. The 1,200, you must show these steps again. Remember I told you just now. Show the steps. Because you never know. I think if I, if I was setting a test, that would get a mark. Times 12. Show it. Then you, you get extra marks. Come. Then you add these two together. Add it together. And what do you get? 8,400. Right, 8,400. Now we're going to work out the, um, the, the taxable income. Taxable income equals the gross salary, 120,000, minus the deductions. That's the little um, formula that I gave you earlier on. Hey? You subtract the two. And the taxable income is 111,600. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, uh, during the break, I'm going to give you an, an opportunity to work out the tax now. I've helped you with the taxable income. And I want you now to, in the break, take the time to look at the tax table. If you don't have a tax table, um, Will we leave the tax table up on the screen? Right. So we're going to leave the tax table up on the screen. And those of you who want to can use the, um, the uh, just remember she's 29 years old. I want to write it yeah, years old. And then you're going to work it out for me. I'll leave the tax table there for you. And you're going to work it out now. Well, in the break, and when we come back after the break, I want to see who are the boffins, the geniuses, the rocket scientists of math literacy. Okay. Good luck. I'll see you just now. Right.